Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Big John. I'm sure you all know me by now. Uh, it's Friday, it's the end of the week, so I'm just going to review uh, some of the pairs I'm going to be looking at for the week ahead and stuff like that. I'm also just going to break down literally how I'm just going to be looking to trade all these pairs and why I'm going to be trading them. This is what I do do in the VIP service. If you do want to get into the VIP service, there is a video on my YouTube or uh, where is it? It's here. This posts every six hours in the Discord, just to remind everybody if they want to get in. It shows you right in this video here on my YouTube that says long-term consistency, one-time fee. You can go in there, you can see all of the services. If you have any questions about the services, you can easily just direct message me and uh, you can take it from there, but it's a one-time fee. So you can get in and then ask me questions as well while you're in the services. It's, it's not really that bad. And it's a very cheap price at the moment, which will be going up of um, basically $25, so $24.99. The reason why I made it that cheap is so everybody can get in and they can understand why I state that I do not overcomplicate Forex. I'm not trying to be a perfect trader, nor do I claim to be a perfect trader. I lose a lot of trades, but over the period of time, I win more trades than I lose. So I'm not trying to be here saying that, yeah, if you trade this way, you're going to catch every setup and here's a sniper entry. I don't do all of that stuff. I ain't got time for all of that stuff. I don't control the markets. I just assess the markets. And when I see an opportunity, I get in. It's either I'm wrong or I'm right and I move on to the next simple so um with all that being said let's just get into the breakdown man let's get into the breakdown so over here on the right of the screen what usually happens for me i've got my all my pairs um shortlisted or whichever way you want to call it and i tag them i tag them in a certain color it makes it better for me this is how i'm able to trade every single pair i want to look at or multiple pairs so majors minors gold indices and sometimes exotics as well and i literally tag anything i'm about to get into or i'm trying to get into this week or the weeks uh, the week coming most times it's this week it happens it'll be like a navy blue color for me and then um anything that's purple for me is something that's going to be uh, overbought or oversold so it's in a position where it's very high or it's very low so you can just literally look at a daily chart and you can see if price is high or low basically. And the whole thing is I'm not trying to get in on price action as soon as it's low or high. I'm waiting for it to break out, give me a retest, and then look for my entry. I kid you not, people, that is how simple I keep my trading with either support and resistance lines. And if I'm being too lazy, I'll just quickly draw the Fibonacci on the daily chart, just as I've shown you people before. Obviously, the VIPs know what they get at the moment for me to show them how quicker I can make that. But either or, it's still very quick. What I'm teaching you guys now is it's not hard. So um, again, the only thing that I pay attention to is you're going to either win trades or you're going to lose trades. As long as you keep that in your mind, you'll make money in the long run. It's that simple, people. If you do have questions while, whilst I'm going through this Zoom, you can write them down and I will be asking during the period of the Zoom if anybody's got any questions. Again, I'm just literally showing you how simple I keep my trading and I just move forward from there. And this is what I do every Sunday with the uh, VIP one time students it was my mentorship thing before again now it's a one-time service so everybody can get in and see what i'm talking about so uh do, 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 do. yeah so i've got my blue pairs which means i'm coming in this week i've got my purple pairs which means they're getting ready for me to get into like i'll just go to the first one and you'll see so again very big long-term downtrend as we can see on nzd cad we're starting to see a breakout now again with this candle buying up obviously if we see some type of a better breakout so we start to see the market buying up a bit more then we're going to find a retest zone and look for entry as you can see i've put some type of retest zone here from previous uh previous markup and that's what i do and then everything that is pretty much orange uh tagged is something that i'm not too sure so hold on a second so let's say this one here we can see it's gone all the way down it's gone i'm uh, sorry so yeah it's gone all the way down from a high even if i draw my fibonacci quickly right from here from the swing high to the swing low keeping it this way you see the fib on my chart sometime and we can really see prices have already gone from a swing high to a swing low broken out and technically this could be a retest area here so this is something i could be looking to trade sometimes i have been trying to take this trade and have made money off of this trade during the month of august at the beginning but if it goes back down again i'm sometimes in the suspicion especially when i do my analysis that it could be going for a liquidity run all the way back down to the lows or the highs or break them etc so if it looks like that, then I'll still just say, hey, I'm not too convinced right now until it gets to the low and I see a new breakout 
and I would just tag these orange. So some of them will be in the middle of nowhere. Like, as you can see, this one was about, I wanted it to come back up here. And when I did tag this orange, it was down here, but we can see that this did break structure going for a sell at the moment. Um, trying to see other things. Uh, let's see if I can get into like something like this so you can just get my drift. Yeah, so we can see something like this right now. So if I was to draw a swing high and a swing low, this would have been my swing high, swing low before, just so you can understand. Swing high, swing low, right here. Right over here. And prices pulled back. Of course, I was waiting for my sales from here. I wanted my breakout, my retest. Obviously, this didn't this uh, didn't retest. It just went slam straight through with the CPI news. So therefore, again, I would make this orange because I'm like, hey, I don't want nothing to do with it. So I'm waiting for price action to turn back around and then look for my breakout and my retest. Oh, again, very simplistic way to trade. I really, really do feel like people are overcomplicating Forex with a lot of big words that they might find or hear or see in places and stuff like that. Uh, just give me one second, people. One second. I'm going to stop the share, but I'll re-add it. Give me one second, because I don't want the screen. I'm just going to re-add uh, trading view. All right, cool. Let's go this one. I'll be back with you now. Okay. And we are back. Okay, so yeah, we're back. We can all see my screen again. I'm just going to add everybody in here if they want to join in on this right now. So get in, they can get in. Uh, all right, cool. So let's go through my pairs. So I'm going to start with Euro AUD. This was something I was looking to take a trade this week, but it never presented its opportunity for me. Um, why I was looking for this is because we saw that the market, where did it start from this week? So it started from here. Let's just get that. Yep, it started from about here. So I was waiting for the market to break out and retest this area down here. Where are we? So we can get my fib levels. Yeah, I was expecting for it to come back down here and then go for continuation of a buy. Sometimes they're going to do this. Price action is just going to fly off without you and there's nothing you can do. So they did pull it back and then they just pulled it straight back up. Um, so right now my new zone, looking for a breakout and a retest would be based around this area here. I'd expect them to come back towards this level right here on the Fibonacci. And I'll be looking for a trade set up just so you can understand what I'm talking about. Let's just say it started selling comes back towards here and then goes back up towards these levels up here. Bean. Uh, so here, please, if you have got your microphone on, if you can mute it, it will help a lot because people hear your background noise. And we can see that here, there's a resistance level up here. So again, keeping it very, very simple, just waiting for a pullback, re-entry of this level. So all I'm going to do is just mark this out as a support zone for myself, liquidity uh, support zone. And that's it. That's what I'm waiting on, Euro AUD. So every day, and this is how I keep it so simple for myself, every single day, all I do is slowly just go through all of my pairs like this one by one. I don't even have to check them every 15 minutes unless there's a huge push, again, like the CPI news. Unless there's a huge push like that, I wouldn't have to come to my charts immediately. Most times I can come to my chart uh, during the one hour gap in Asian session. And I just go over all of my pairs stage by stage. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a question or something like that. Okay, mute your mic. Okay, cool. So this is what I'm waiting on Euro AUD from next week, something like that. Of course, if it keeps buying up a little bit more, then that could happen. Also, this is another trade setup. We can see there's a strong resistance zone here at the moment previously. So if I am waiting for price action to pull back, other people might do this. I don't do this because I just can't be bothered to do all of that. I believe for me, it's over trading, but other people, they might try and get in on a resistance sell from this level back down to maybe here. If I am right, it will give me another entry here. A lot of the times we do get a Trinity alert here. I like to see one hour alerts, but again, the one hour alert might appear too far away for me. So therefore um, the 15 minute alert might suffice. I might get into that one and then just try and take price action for a continuation because we can see this is a support area, literally that simple. So Euro AUD is a trade I'm looking on. 
you can see Eurocad as well, another one that just went fly, just literally went to the moon. There's nothing we can do about that. So it broke this resistance level. It struggled to break this resistance level for almost two months now. Finally broke through. This month, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, in fact, I won't even get rid of that. I'm just looking at it. Um, yep. So what I will do is just change this from a resistance to a support. And what I will be expecting is price action to come back into this, either into this area and then give me a retest for a buy. Pardon me. Or it can come to this top bit here, give me a retest for a buy. So it's either or it will do that. I'd prefer for it to come back into this area and grab any liquidity it might have left behind. Because if this is a push up, let's go to the higher time frames and look. So this is literally what I do, people. So you can understand. I just go to the higher time frame. I'll look. And then I can see there's a wick here on the higher time frame. So I'm like, okay, hold on a second. So there's a wick here for liquidity over here. So if they are coming back down, they could come and grab that. Again, we can see even on the monthly time frame, there's a bigger wick. So me just starting there, I'll know that on a higher time frame, there's a wick down here. So I'll be like, why did I draw that circle there? So I'll go check my time frames and be like, okay. So again, I would be expecting them to come and do a liquidity grab, stop hunt, probably some type of news next week, bring price back down towards this level here, and then either stop at this level here, or what they will do is uh, break through this level and smash it. Wonky arrow, but yeah, we'll leave it there. So I'm looking at something like this, or from it could come off from this level, but this would be a better entry for me to be able to take this move going up right now. Uh, that's that so I'm just going through all the pairs I'm looking at immediately for next week so everybody can see how and what I'm talking about again very simplistic no need to notice I'm not doing nothing fancy here nothing fancy at all swing high swing low I'm on my daily time frame sometimes I go to my weekly or my monthly depending on how far away price action is you're going to see that with the JPYs later on and you can see straight away here I can see my swing high my swing low cool uh, what can we see here? We can see price action broke out of here. These were levels that we can see when the breakout happened. Let's just go here. What do we have? Uh, so now I'm looking at this. So I can see over here to the right. And this is why I say it's better to get into the one-time uh, VIP service because it's all good and well me showing you this once. But when I show you this multiple times in different ways it can form as well, you start to understand this more and more. And people that used to stay in the mentorship for about six months or longer, they were people that started to see profits more and more and understand what I was talking about. So we can see here, there's rejections over here, loads of rejections down here, but it's already gone past this level. So we don't need to worry about the one down here right now. All I need to worry about is up here. So what I will do is now say my support level is here. So again, and we can see, you see I marked these arrows out from the Sunday Zoom and look what price action has done. Doesn't do this all the time. We don't see huge breakouts all the time. They could do fake outs and sell back down. But of course, when you get it right, you get it right. There was a liquidity here on the daily time frame. That obviously, they went to go clear. Probably on the higher time frames, there could have been liquidity up to the top side there as well. Liquidity, I like to just call them those wicks that have been left behind. I've made a few good videos on this on my YouTube channel. If you want to find out what videos they are, message me and I'll send them to you so you can understand it better. Um, again, we can see there. So here's another level of support here. We're in a nice clean uptrend as well on this. So unless they really want to be a pagan and go all the way back down, liquidity, then uh, support. So I'm expecting them right now to do this on price action, bring price back down to this level here. This is a nice level and then do like a V-shaped buy back up. That's what I'm expecting them to do to go back to this level or to break it higher. So Euro AED, Euro CAD, Euro New Zealand is what I'm looking at to take trades on next week i don't think to be fair and this is why because i'm a swing trader i keep it nice simple and i bring it slower because people that don't trade forex often or are very new to the game let's just put it that way it's a better way to say it they try and go into scalping straight away because they see it as oh when i'm at work i make 50 pound a day 100 pound a day or whichever way dollars yen whatever way you want to put it um but we've got to realize that the forex market is not the same as a job like that you're not supposed to expect that you come in every single day and you're going to be making some type of money or profits. We need to stop trying to do that, people, because when you are doing that, you're basically putting yourself in a position to over trade. It's not built up like a nine to five job, the Forex market. It's built up for investment. And basically, just more than anything, it's long term trends right now to uh, for the market to buy this far. 
this was a absolutely huge order. But for them to even gather the idea that they're going to do this, we're talking people that have made decisions over periods of months before they said, okay, at this point, around about this day, now we're all going to put in, put our money together, put in this huge order to push price this way. This is how it works, you understand? So us trying to come in, even though you can scalp on lower timeframes and try and say, we're going to get paid every day from Forex, you've got to kind of bring that down because again, that's not how the market actually works. Even though you are able to do it, it's not how it works is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's really not a daily job. So you need to just pay attention to that. And that's, again, it's part of the main reason why I made my thing a one-time fee because when it's a subscription, I would feel compelled to give people trades and I might not give you bet the best setups I can give I, because of obviously the time frame people are trying to make the subscription money and all these types of things you get. It. But um, the biggest thing I've noticed is that, again, if you're just patient, you take your time, you're going to make these setups. It's like how we caught Cat JPY and NZDJPY this week. I was just patient. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's part of this. Trust me, the, one of the biggest reasons I made my finger one time fee was just to get rid of the psychology pressure because it's, it's enough psychology on myself trying to stay consistent. But when I am trying to do it with for other people, with other people and all of this, regardless of who you are, you're going to get pressure. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's kind of how it goes. So yeah, you're at NZD. This is what we are looking at here. GBP odd. Ooh, this is selling, selling right now. This is nice. This is what I like to see. This is what I like to see. So you see what I'm saying? So this is why I'm going through it with you guys and girls live, live old. This is what I do on the weekend or every evening. I'll just go through the chart exactly how I said, oh, I'll look at it and say, okay, this looks like it's gearing up for a, um, a retest, basically. So it bought up straight away, but now we've seen something beautiful here. Like I really look at this like it's art. And that's how I just look at it. And I'm just like, it's drawing a new picture every single day. And trust me, it gets very annoying when you lose a trade. Yes, I understand. I don't like losing trades either. I don't, don't like it. So I don't want anyone to think I'm deliberately trying to just lose trades sometimes or whatever. I hate losing trades just like everybody else, but it is what it is. You know, you've got to take it for what it is. So um, we can see here GBP Ord. Again, it bought up straight away. Uh, what happened is it actually did give a breakout at first. We were looking for the retest of this, but it didn't. What did it do? Yeah, it pushed itself back into here. I was expecting for it to hit the lows here to give us like a uh, double bottom or triple bottom as we can see one, two and a third tap and then go, but it never did that. It created a higher low on, let's say a four hour chart because it's a daily chart. You can see there was a higher low from here to here, just so I mark it out for people. So they can see what I'm saying. Created a higher low here. And then we saw a one hour Trinity buy alert that came through here and then look what price action did. It was crazy. So this is why I took AU and GU because we saw a similar setup like this on AU and GU in a signal service. I saw one like this and this was a 270 pip buy. So regardless of what could have happened in the trade, basically the 12 trades hit SL and that's absolutely fine. But you could have said GA could have hit SL as well using the same as that confluence, breakout, retest, one hour alert, entry. It could have hit stop loss and gone all the way back down to the lows. And I didn't take the trade literally based on that, that let's say quote unquote fear of, oh, the market might go back down and hit the lows basically. Do you understand? So this is why the next time when the trades did come through, AU, GU, I took the trades because I'm like, you need to stop doing that. All you need to care about is your risk management. If you're not too sure on a trade, guess what? Lower your risk. So I might say to myself, instead of taking a 0.50% risk on this trade to, you know, usually I'll trade on a prop account, something like if it's a 20K account, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to try and lose $100 to make $400 on this trade one to four. Yeah. But now I'm in a position where I'm like, okay, um, on this trade now, I'm going to lose $50 to try and make $200 because I don't like the fact it didn't touch the low. There you go. So if you, you know, I, if I give you this trade and it loses, it's cool. If I give you free trades like that and it loses, it's cool because you lose 1.5%, but you wouldn't have lost 3% trying to take each individual trade I'm giving you like that in one go. So again, I do try and tell people, I'm like, look, I'd prefer for it to go hit the low. And this is what I'll tell you in the a signal service in the one time field. So I'd prefer for it to go hit here but it's come up with a H1 Trinity alert. I'm entering this trade because again, it can go off or not. And like I said, it did. So what we can see here is it's left a um, huge liquidity from the reversal it did two days ago. That's cool. Now what we're expecting is for price action to come back into this level. There was a break of structure here in the market. So more than anything, it could come back to here and just retest. But then we, so I would say to myself right now, just so I've got it here, 
I'm looking for another re-entry within this song here. So between these two fib levels, so let me just move this out of the way. In fact, this can go because probably a bit of new Trinity alert there. Uh, let's just move this up here, top. Literally, this is what I do, guys and girls. This is how I catch my trades. So we can see here, boom, pushing price back down here. And then now I'm looking for an entry somewhere within this zone here or um, between these two lines, basically. So the 0 0.236 and the 0 0.1144. This time it might be a pagan and go and touch the low. It can happen. But again, if it gives me my opportunity here, I'm going to take it. But you know why I'm going to take it like this? And again, just what I explained to you, I'm going to lower my risk because I'm very aware that there's liquidity below this level here. We can see wicks here. We can see even this one here on a, on a higher time frame, Like a weekly chart, look how nasty it looks. It looks completely different on a weekly chart. So, but it's great though, because it's done this. Look, it's left liquidity down towards this side all the way until here, let's see. Yeah, until here, there's a wick. Uh, let's zoom in so you can see what i'm saying people there's a wick right here all the way down here so they could be pushing price here lock it in break structure back up to the upside that's what a trinity alert would give us boom and then we can take our trade but at least we know there's liquidity but what the problem is right now is there's a wick here they could be going to cover and there is a little bit of a wick here so i'm just going to go check how it looks on the monthly time frame as well i'm about to get into this trade so now i'm interested on what might be going on so I can see below here, there's a wick. So unless they're going to push it all the way lower and go cover this lit wick like we've seen with gold, then it's cool. But again, not overthinking it. If it gives me a Trinity buy alert, I am entering that trade if it's in my zone. Simple. All I would do is lower my risk. So yeah, GA is the first trade I'll be looking at taking. It'll be one of the trades that will come out on the signal account. So you'll see it again. So when it comes through the signals, that's what will happen. If I win the trade, I win it. If I lose it, it'll be there in the signal stats. You can see here from GBP AU, uh, USD, same thing. So look what happened, people. Breakout, we had the pullback towards the buy zone area, which was here. Price didn't respect it. It tried to buy up this time, failed again, didn't respect it. Gave us a Trinity alert here, and it just failed, broke it. And there you go, went back down to the lows. So what I do with this pair now, now it's broke the lows. I'm just going to turn this pair to a purple because it's no longer in my list yet. It's um, how I said, I've got a three point list. So I've got on your marks, get set and then go. So go is the navy blue color. Purple is on your marks. And um, sorry, purple's on your marks. Blue, navy blue is get set. And then when I'm in the trade, I'll turn it light blue, but I haven't just done that this week. I'll turn it to a baby blue color basically, which is just so you can see, it's this color here. That's what I do. Let's keep it. So let me turn this back to a purple. Cool. So that's that. I'm just going to go back in here quickly and put this in here for everyone. This and out. Again, it's going to be on YouTube, but all right. So, like I said, for people to be in this and how I do it every single week, just get into that one time fee. Again, why I changed it, I just said, you know what? It makes more sense. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Cool. So that's GU. And then AU, same thing. It's broke the lows as well. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to change this purple. And EU, I think, did the same thing. No, EU is holding the lows. So look at this as holding its support. So this is a 22-year-old um, support, I believe it was here. It was a 20-year-old support, this level. I've gone all the way back and checked it, like I did with gold for the nine-year su uh, support resistance. This is like a 20-year or something like that. Um, support level so it's a very very strong level so if they are going to break this level it will be another huge candle like you've seen here but right now it's holding this level and it could buy back up so it is in a buy zone so you probably could get a h1 trinity buy alert in this area uh, just give me a second let me see if i see something here just gonna go see if i see a uh, euro usd alert um, Let's go here. I'm just, I'm just checking um, Telegram quickly to see if I do see it. Let me just share the screen with you so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, look, I've just gone here. I've gone to search. I've typed in Euro USD, and I just want to see if there was any today that did come up here. So we had one at um, four o'clock UK time. So I don't know if that was how. I don't think that was held. So was there any others? No, we had one at one four so uh, 
share, go back to here. Yeah, I'm just gonna go down to the one hour chart quickly. You see, yeah, so that's what, this was two o'clock. Okay, now it was held. So yeah, there, so, so far it is held, but that's a huge buy up. So basically this is a one hour alert here. So the one hour alert of Trinity appeared here. We can see they're pulling it back. And like I've said, so when you've got something like this on Trinity, now you can just do something simple like this. And from here to here, like I've told people, it's literally like how you're using supply demand. So the 50% area in this will be here. Just use these little, um, whatever they are, the dots, whatever, to figure out where 50% is because you've drawn the box and this is literally the halfway point of the box. So we're expecting them to at least retest this area now. So if we do see something like this, they're going to pull it back because sometimes you get this because of fresh breakout and then we could see a continuation. Of course, what we have seen here is there's a huge um, slippage in the market here, which they are going to cover at some point. They've definitely got to cover this. So this is your target high. Mm -hmm. It's better. It better. W shape here. Can hear your private lives. We don't need to hear that. Don't need to hear that, man. All right, cool. So yeah, this is the idea of your USD. So if you're if this uh, one hour Trinity alert does hold, this is literally a buy trade right here. You can see it's Friday, it's late on Friday, so I'm not gonna personally touch it, but coming through to next week, it could literally hold this level on this one hour alert, and then boom, price could buy it all the way up to here. Because at some point, like I said, it's gotta cover that. Euro USD compared to the other USDs, it's probably because the Euro, as we can see, the Euro is very strong at the moment, because it's been buying. So that's probably why we can also see this when we break this down, very simple. So this would literally be a trade right here. So you can see, I'm just not gonna enter it because it's Friday, that's why I'm not entering it. Um, and again, it's late on Friday, but yeah, there we go. We're seeing uh, higher lows being formed. So higher lows being formed here. We've seen the higher time frame breakout, which I've seen. I've seen it pull back into this area, which is an area of interest. That's why it's marked green for possible buys. We've had another H1 Trinity alert here. We're even seeing the pullback on this H1 Trinity alert. If you get about 50% on this pullback here, then you're looking to take price action for a move up to here, and it should cover this. So this would be a big move that goes to cover this if it does hold here for next week. Again, if you're not too sure, lower your risk, man. You don't have to win every single trade. You just enter and you hold it like that. That is how it goes. So, yep, Euro USD right now. Yeah, like I said, this is literally a trade here. So I'm going to come back and revisit this next week myself just to see. And then we call it that. So that's a possible buy there unless it breaks the lows. The other USDs have broken the low. So again, I'd lower my risk knowing that the USDs, gold, all of these have been breaking lows. So I'll just lower my risk and take that trade. Either win or lose. Keep it simple. Move on. Um, okay, so let's go back over to the daily. All right, cool. Let's move this up here because it's bought. So I'm just going to move this up here. Boom. And then we can see price action has gone from here to here. We're seeing a huge reversal in this. This is a nice reversal here. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This, this reversal is crazy. See how mad this market's been moving lately. Nice one. So, um, yeah. Now what I would be waiting for is um, if we're talking about a sell, really, I would prefer, I usually have my Fibonacci's a bit bigger than that. I usually have my Fibs like up here. So this isn't really an area I'd be getting in. You can see this is just a 50%. If you start drawing a bigger fib, I'd like to have a bit more because my fib won't be all the way up here because this was a drop from um, Feb February. Yeah, we actually caught this trade all the way from up here, by the way, people. Imagine that. This was a NEO trade. So this is what I'm trying to tell people. And I'm like, some, you just got to be patient for NEO sometimes because it has the possibility to do this. That's not going to happen every month. It might happen every four months, a big trade like this. But yeah. You've got a possibility of that. It was over a thousand pips that trade. So for me, I would rather have my Fibonacci a bit higher, bring it down a little bit lower so it can here. And this is more or less how I'd be looking at um, GBP New Zealand, even from this lower there. And right now, still not the best. So let's just bring this up because that's where it was before. So this is kind of what I'd be looking at it like. So I'd prefer for it to go up higher. So right now I'd be waiting for this to sell back down. Um, if there is a buy area, we are looking at here, clearly. If we look at it, the most wick rejections was the, towards this area. Look, one, two, three, four, five, tried to break through, failed, broke through, came back, held, 
tried to break back through again, kept hit, um, holding, then broke all the way through, came back down. So any buy area on this trade right now would be this area over here for now. Uh, support. Right there. Literally that. And yep. So right now, that is all the pairs I'll be looking at right now, unless the market changes. So right now I have at least uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pairs I'll be interested in trading next week. And this is what I call the circle of pips, people. I just do this in a rotation through every single pair. The rest of them I'll go over with the students on, um, let's, I'll say the members, because it's no longer a, um, a monthly mentorship. You know, it's just me giving advice in the market. I'll say the members, the VIP members, I'll be going over that with the one-time VIP members on Sunday and go a bit more in depth. I'm going to be doing some risk management stuff on those Sunday Zooms as well. So you definitely want to get in there, mate, to help people with their prop accounts. Um, for those huge trades, do you trail stop or you only have targets? So with those huge trades, what I actually do more than anything, of course, I don't catch 1,000 pip trades every single time. I'm not going to go on like I do. But um, of, over time, and as I'm going to become a much more better and better and veteran trader, I'm going to be learning, as I have been doing, is I try and hold my trades to one to four now. Before, I used to only do one to two. Now, I do a bit of a tighter stop loss, and then I do one to four because I can make more money on the trade. That's my risk to reward. And um, what I do do is I'll prefer to take, like, I want my trade to get 75% of the way before I take any partial profits or close the trade out if I need to, if it looks dodgy. That's what I'll do. And then if it gets to 50%, so one to two, I'll put a break even stop loss basically on my entry. I try not to, obviously, if it goes all the way to one to four, I'll take like 90% of the trade off and then let the rest run or close it out entirely. But I try not to trail my stop because trailing can just take you out of the game for no reason sometimes. So I don't really use a trailing stop. I'll just put a break even so I lose no money. If it goes one to two, I'm at that when it goes one to two, I put a break even at my entry. So I lose no money. Our entry was literally like here, it was kind of crazy. So I'll do that. And then again, if it goes 75% of the way, I'll be even looking to take partial profits or close the trade out. So of course I can make some um, some RR, some percentage or whatever on the in the day or the week. And um, yeah, if I'm doing that, then I'll be letting about 10% or 5% of the trade just run, literally. That's what I did with uh, CAD JPY and NZD JPY today. They went about 75% of the way and then I took out my rest of my positions and then I left... Um, two more positions to run and as it was coming to the end of the day i closed out literally that um so yeah now it's time for questions people if anyone's got any questions please hit me up anybody got questions hit me up don't be shy people if you got some questions let's go through it i'm going to gold let's see what i'm seeing on gold So whilst you think of your questions, I'm just going to do an analysis of gold again. I've been doing a lot of analysis on this, either in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory area. So you can come into my Discord. And then this is where I put all my analysis on gold for free. This is absolutely free for every single person that does come in. It's here, man. So you can go through here. Of course, every single thing is not going to be perfect, but I try and give the best I can on what's going on. I don't put entries with stop loss and take profits because if it doesn't hit the confluences that I need, I ain't entering the trade. And this is one that I had the confluences for. Here, I gave this trade out and everybody made money. So you see, I don't put this every single time, but when I did, it's because it hit all of my confluences and I was like, yep, this trade's either going to go from here or it's not. So I, that's why I gave out a stop loss and a take profit for everybody. Um, I'm not going to be doing prop firm trading after everybody I have done it for. It was a test run. But more than anything, I can see, and that's why I said it was a test run. I never said, oh, this is a, you know, like I'm saying, this is a one-time service fee. This is great. And everyone could join. That's something that's a bit more set. As that one, I was like, let me see if I can do it. I just wanted to challenge myself. You know, it's always good to look for new challenges. And it is good to be able to do these types of things. But the biggest problem I could say with prop firm uh, copying is the fact that, and I'm going to be as blunt as, as possible, people are putting a lot of expectations on you because they either believe that you're a better trader than maybe what you are or what they do is they just expecting something but it's like the video i made in the last video 
um, that I put on YouTube, the psychology video. This is what I feel could be absolutely wrong, but I'm just being brutally honest, is that, of course, people have an expectation to be, and it's not even down to the trader now, it's just being able to get an account, grow an account and get out of whatever situation they're in or make sure they can get to this level in Forex. And you got to remember what starts happening is vicariously you're putting that or vicariously you're putting that pressure on the person trading your account. Do you understand? So it could be through conversations. I remember there's one person that messaged me and they were asking how I'm taking my profits. And when they asked me how I was taking my profits, then all of a sudden I started saying, oh, let me just start closing some partial profits. So I don't want them to think I'm not running the account. I'll be honest with you. I don't want them to think I'm not running the account properly and I'm just holding trades unnecessarily. And that's not the thing. You've got to let your trades play out. And a lot of the trades that came through in August, they were not just going even one to two. They were just going one to 1.5 and then reversing because it's August. Obviously there's low volatility. We're not seeing the breakouts we're seeing now. All of these huge breakouts you're seeing now, this wasn't happening in August like that. So um, yeah, it's just one of those things. And like I said, it's... Um, I prefer to, I tell every single person time and time again, stop trying to pass your prop firm challenges immediately. You've got to stop doing that, people. If you go and get yourself a 50K, 100K, 200K, 300K, and you don't have money to, to get that every single month for 12 months, what are you doing? I'm just going to tell you that from now. If you do not have the money to do that, what are you doing? Because you're not treating getting a prop account like how you would treat compounding your live account. This is the thing I came to in an instant realization as soon as I uh, jumped into my Forex funds. Sat down with my brother. I always tell people he's a mathematician. And I was like, okay, bro, how do we break this down so we can make this something realistic? And then we came up with a clear idea of do not try and get a huge prop account. Get very small prop accounts, yeah? And then keep trying to pass those over time. You're not going to pass all of them. Like I've said, since the beginning of the year, I've passed three 20K accounts. I didn't pass nine. Hear me out, people. I didn't pass nine because you're going to fail some. Some are going to get free retests, uh, ret retests uh, retries, yeah? But once you put yourself in that position over the period of a year to two years, you're going to grow. And then now what happens is as you get paid out, you're able to use the Forex money to buy the bigger accounts. You don't have to buy 20K accounts forever. But if you're able to get to live accounts, obviously what you're doing is correct. So then what you do is you use that money to go and get your bigger accounts. I understand that jo your work might be pissing you off or life might be annoying you. You just want to leave that relationship. You're stressed or whatever. I don't know. Whatever your problem is, I get it. But you've got to understand the market doesn't care about your problems. I'm going to keep saying that to people. I don't care how bad it sounds. The market doesn't care about your problems. The market doesn't care if you don't even eat tomorrow. It doesn't care. So you've got to always remember that and you've got to be realistic in the way you've got to grow in this market. So I hope that answered your question. Very big, but that's why I'm stopping uh, the prop copy firm trading because of you can see how passionate I am when I'm explaining it. And if people are not on the level of what I just explained there, I'm not doing it, man. It's long. It's long. <laughs> that's the word. That's what we say in the UK. Bro, that's long. I'm not doing it. <laughs> not doing it. If you're not on that level, it's, it's pointless. I don't need to have to explain myself in situations. You get what I'm saying? It's like, we either pass or we don't. Just like a trade will win or lose. Simple. Keep it like that. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, man. Anybody else got any other questions? Don't be shy, man. Don't be shy. Um, 200K account is really expensive. Yeah, of course it's expensive, but people go for it. And when they go for it, sometimes I'm just like, hey, man, hey, what you doing, bro? Because you can see me. If you believe that I'm good at teaching and I'm good at giving you advice in situations, uh, bear with me one second, people. Sorry. Sorry, people. My son just gave me a phone call. So, of course, you have to answer that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else got any other questions and things like that? Anybody else got any other questions? Yeah, so, so I was just talking about that. Why should you got any other questions? Let me know. Um, yeah, don't go for your 200K accounts if you do not have the money to pay for it every single month. Your 100K accounts, pointless. You're, you're doing yourself no favors. It's, it's, you're literally basically over leveraging or over risking in a trade. That's what you're doing, just in a different format. 
it doesn't look like that but that's what you are doing so gold if it closes below 1680 right now then what we're going to see is more than likely a continuation down to this level here on the monthly time frame i do find this very suspicious this wick it left here and this is a wick that it left from covid the buyback up it did to recover itself um i did call it out all the way back from covid i was like okay it left the wick here so at some point it's going to come back to it and yeah two years later this is what we're seeing so it could be going down towards this liquidity here for a longer term sell if it is going to do that I expect to see lots of negative news appearing because that's what they'll be using to push it down with force to obviously get to this level quickly they're not going to spend months to get here so more than anything maybe one to three months i'd say max but they wouldn't so it might even go in two months they might just push it push it push it and people so it's melting if we are going into a quote-unquote recession in 2023 that's your excuse right over there uh, no problem at all yeah sunday we will see ya we will see ya um do, 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 do. any other questions people any other questions don't be shy Cool. So if we do not see this um, complete breakdown of 1680, we just got to see what it does by market close. Then we're going back up to the upside, as you can see on the upside over here. Let's just, yeah, let's do that. Let's bring this over here. As you can see on the upside over here, there's liquidity they left behind from that sell. So if it does hold that level, then we're seeing a buy back up. But it held this level for a year now, man. So almost two years it held it. So I could be seeing it. We could be seeing it. Sorry, going back down here. For this week here, what we see recovery. I don't actually read trading books, and I'm not saying it's wrong to. I mean, future I might read a lot more, but I don't really read a lot of trading books. I, I'm I'm a simplistic person when it comes to things in life, and I try and look for the most simplicity. And um, and don't get me wrong, I used to be a person that used to be like, oh no, I love this and love that because I feel like I'm a creative, so I like like colorful things. I like it, but. I've just had to learn over time, over time, that simple is always the better way. Keep it simple. And then once you are in a position to make things bigger and better, then do that. And you'll get a lot more things done in life, basically. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not even, I feel like reading is a very good thing, but I've just always been a visual learner. I learn from visualizing things and seeing the uh, video footage or pictures and stuff like that. That's how I do, because it gives me an idea most times what happens for me when I read books is my mind kind of just drifts. <laughs> That's the truth. It just drifts. It drifts into those visual things. So it just happens. But when I'm watching something, I'm engaged into what I'm watching, like, especially if I find it interesting. So my daily routines on the chart, uh, do, routine on the charts is literally what you just saw there. So again, like I said, remember what I've told you. So when I log in, I've got all my pairs because people probably think it's crazy that I'm trading all the pairs i said it in my forex ones and they're like really <laughs> that's what they said to me they're like really and i was like yeah trade all the pairs pairs go high they sell they go low they buy this is what they do so i call it the circle of pips you know you just gotta wait for it if you wait for it, it will happen so what i do is i make sure i just check through all of my pairs so every day i come to my charts like, like i don't have no fancy routine outside of trading like go do this and do that first and all of that i don't have nothing like that as it stands but if you're talking about just when i'm on the charts my first thing is to come here look at my um, organization of my pairs. So I've already organized myself. Remember, I've just gone through it now with you. So I've drawn all of my support and resistance levels and everything I'm interested in and all of that. I've done all of that. And then I'll literally just go, like I said, my target zone is I'm looking from the monthly, weekly, daily and anything lower, but I've already got my daily. I mean, here, this is my, like, my go-to because I can see price action enough and I can see straight away. Okay, yeah, I'm still waiting. So like you saw, I saw with GA. So... This is a before, let's say EA, but now I've seen GA and I'm like, okay, yep, GA is coming towards an area. It can give me a possible setup for a buy. Once it gets into this area, I'm waiting for it. I've got a target and that's what I do. So I'll know that today, my main focus is on GA. So every four hours or two hours, I'll be checking GA to see where it is. And that's literally what I do. Literally, hopefully that answers your question. I keep it very simple, right? I've already done all my analysis. So the hard work is out of the way. So once you've done what I just shown you in the beginning of this video, 
and then you'll just be able to come to your charts and do this. And I feel like that's what I said when, once I was using too many other things, people were getting com uh, confused with what I was trying to teach. When I've made it very simple like this, people are like, okay, cool. Is this it? And I'm just like, yeah, well, <laughs> this is it. You don't have to worry. Um, let's go see what's here. I think gold will pull back right there because it looks like a lot of liquidity there. And now it's going to push it out back then, come down. What's that? I think gold will pull. All right, let's go back to gold quickly. Yeah, so it seems like it's holding this level right now. I don't see why they would have done this push down into this level if they were going to pull it back in personally. I can't imagine why why they would break this level over this so long. For them to have broke the, uh, break this level, then you know we're looking. We must be looking at a continuation to the downside. There's a, there's at least a seventy five percent I would say continuation to the downside. Again, for me, like I said, it all bases on what happens here. If they close today below this level here. This daily candle, yeah, we're, we're probably going down. Is that what I said when I said here? I said, um, when price action, if price action closes between 1707, which was our support for our buys, then we're looking at a sell down. So it closed below, and there you go. The next day, look at the sell. So anyone could have got in just based on that. My idea was that if it held this candle, but yeah, the, the first theory I had was completely right. I mean, if it was going to hold this level and buy, it would have held. And again, you can see this. This is why I tell people that you can't be bummed about losing trades and learn market structure. Like, learn it. Look, broke through, held. There is no mad magical strategy that's going to make this right or wrong. It's either going to break through and hold. That's it. Or it's going to break through and fail. And this is what you saw here. You saw a hold here. You saw a fail here. So, again, this is why I gave the analysis. If it breaks below 7, 1707, look for a continuation of the sell. That's it. It's literally that. If you don't complicate it, you'll make more money in Forex over time. Just lower your risk. That's it uh any other questions people any other questions and again this is what we're seeing here we're seeing a breakthrough here and then now we're seeing this if it holds that level isn't it funny how that news just failed to break this level why did they not break back through even if they wanted to fake us they held it but yeah we could be seeing a continuation of the cell no other questions people anybody anybody us fake let's go see what this is doing it's left a gap inefficiency imbalance as people would call it it's left it but yeah look right down to this weekly wick so from when we got this cell from where did we get this cell from i believe i even gave it out from here you know this cell i remember i gave out some crazy cell somewhere it's in the uh, pip count but yeah i marked this area out the reason why i marked out this area again you see the same things i don't make this up guys and girls keep it simple look wicks weekly time frame this is why so people that are getting obliterated by the markets is because they're going on to lower time frames and they're just paying attention to that. Go up to your higher time frames and go down. People kept saying that to me from when I first started trading. I didn't want to listen to them. I was like, no, you're crazy. Why are you on the higher time frames? Who needs to trade the monthly? Who needs to trade the weekly? I'm telling you people, go to your higher time frames and read the story. It makes a lot more sense. It doesn't matter what you're going to enter on the lower time frame. If something's on the higher time frame, it's going to sink better that way for you. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yep, we weekly wicks there. So what do we see? We see price action can hold here. So if price action holds above this daily support area, then we could be seeing a continuation back to the upside. If not, then we're going to see a push down. So what I would like to see here is a minimum of a H1 uh, Trinity alert for a possible continuation. But again, I would, because it's such a heavy force we're seeing in this candle right now, I would be using very low leverage, possibly take an L on this trade, might go back down to the lows, break back up again. And then we could see like something like this again. Look, same thing. If I'm making this up, people, what's going on here? Price is going to break out. It's either going to hold structure and continue, or it's going to go into fail. It tried to hold structure here, failed this time. Obviously, CPI didn't help anybody. And there you go. Like, all you've got to do is work out your RR trading strategies. You don't need a fancy strategy. You need to work out your risk management and stop trying to expect that you're going to be making a thousand a month from forex in the next three months and uh, don't do all of that stuff it'll give you your money when it gives you your money that's it because in the end of the day we can't move these charts they move it so the outcome will always be based on whatever they do not what we think we know based on it so that's about it so yeah anything else people anything else i'm going to the nasdaq after i've gone into the nasdaq and spx i'm gonna leave it there again liquidity fill weekly time frame pointed it out 
Uh, and same thing here. Look, NASDAQ, same as that thing. Liquidity fill, retap into this resistance area. Some people will call it supply, weekly supply zone, retest, boom, right there. And the fill. So we're just looking. So right now it's a patience game with this. Is either you're trying to sell with them or you're going to wait for it to get to these levels and look for your re-entries for your buys. Um, and this is why these are the charts I give out in the VIP. So I'll be doing this. So when I see price move into zones or something happening, I'll put it in the uh, VIP service. Um, I'm trying to think, was that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, silver is what I wanted to go to. And silver is the last one. So silver, I gave out a fantastic trade on silver. I gave out this trade all the way from here on silver. Anybody that was paying attention. So I told them, again, that was in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory area. Uh, I believe it was here. Let's go here. Let me look at that. Is it this one here? No, that's gold. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. So this is proof that I do this, people. <laughs> For anyone watching this and watches it to the end, look at this silver chart. I'm not giving this out for no reason. I've seen what it's done. Breakout, retest. Okay, look at it, 17991. And then now when we come to this silver chart, what do we see? Boom, look at that buy. Uh, it's gonna happen like this, people, every so often. It's not gonna happen every time. But again, this is why you have your risk to reward in a certain ratio. And I, now that's why I do one to force because my trades can run a lot longer when I do catch them. Obviously I trade off the higher time frame, So this is why I'm just like, cool but the same thing look came to that area i said it's either going to hold this level or it's not my reason for it i've given out every reason here and explained it is that when you go to the monthly time frame look at the resistance that was here on this monthly time frame and then this huge breakout from after corona so this level are saying okay it's either going to hold this level right now as you can see it held it to push it down or it's gonna um sell back down so i was like yep you can get in you got in it was a very tight sl trade basically right there so what question do we have here this is like the mark does it say yeah we were trading off the big players we're, we're say we are trading off big players thinking yep and that's literally it that's literally it this is why i um I commend people to watch Mark Doug Douglas. When I when they join the VIP, I tell them I send them the Mark Douglas videos where I can get them like, listen, you gotta watch this, man. Cause he changed my game for me when it came into trading, literally. Okay. Hi, bro. Yes, this is live. This is live. There are children on the on the Zoom as well and stuff like that. So please be easy. Don't ask anything inappropriate. Well, you asked me that. He <laughs> said, is this live? <laughs> this is the, why, why are you asking? Why are you asking, man? So um no problem, man. No problem, no problem. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. You just gotta you just gotta trade how you go. And again, I'm gonna say it, I'm not a perfect trader. I lose trades, bruv. I lose trades. It's cool. I'm annoyed when I lose them as well, but I understand that you're not gonna lose um every single trade, and you just gotta understand more than anything that. There's a method to everything. My method is um, basically for prop accounts. So I'm going to go into prop accounts quickly at the end of this. Please go and get yourself one of these accounts. I'm telling you right now, if you don't have enough capital, like over 10,000 to trade with, it's kind of pointless trading, lower capital. You can make money. I'm not saying you can't, so it's not here. Uh, where are we? General. Go into the pin section. Yep, my affiliate link's here. I'd love it if you do go and get that. That'd be fantastic for me, people. But um, once you do get that, you have to use that actual link and go through to the purchase side and buy the account. And then I'll get some uh, like 5%. So I'm being completely transparent, like 5 or 2% of whatever you paid, something like that, depending on your account size. Um, yeah, please do if, if you do. Please do if you do. Uh, yeah, what I'm saying is that it's better for you to go get a MyForest Funds account. Trust me, I fought against the grain for a long time. And I said, nope, I've got 5K. I can trade that. I can make my money and do all of this and do that. I keep telling people the biggest realization I did is when I went deep and worked out the maths. And it makes no sense you trying to use 5K to trade when you can use that 5K to go to your evaluation accounts and you can get multiple. If you've got 5K, 2.5K, do you know how many of these accounts you can get? You can almost get at least 15 or something, maybe 12 to 15 of these accounts here, if you've got $10,000 or $5,000, sorry, 
And that gives you 15, listen to what I'm trying to tell you here. Forex is probabilities. Remember what we just discussed in this whole Zoom. You're either going to win a consecutive amount of trades, lose a consecutive amount of trades, or win and lose. This is what happens. You're either going to win or lose, yeah? You need to put yourself in when you've got capital in real life, yeah, into many probabilities. So this is why if you've got 2K or 5K or something like that, you've got even 1K, go and get yourself these accounts because this lets you, yeah, forget the fact of, oh, I've got to pass it and da -da -da, I've got to do all of this stuff. Listen to what I'm saying here. This gives you at least in phase one, 20 days to trade with. Rather than you trying to make all your money on your 5K account within that week, it gives you 20 days with set rules for you to be able to try and get an account then it gives you 40 days in phase two because they don't count the weekends this is why i'm saying this so it's 20 and 40 days yeah not 30 and 60 i had this discussion in my forex funds today yeah um so basically you're in a position and you can also get an extension in phase one if you are above six percent yeah so you can get 40 days in phase one basically and 40 days in phase two so i'm going to answer the questions in a minute people yeah i just want to just get this point out yeah go and get yourself one of these accounts because now you've got almost 80 days worth of probabilities if you are obviously 6% in phase one, yeah, and you don't get to 8%. Now you've got almost 80 days worth of trading probabilities on one account, yeah, from that 2K, 1K you've got of real life money or 5K or 10K. Hear what I'm saying to you. That's what you need in Forex. You don't need to be in a position where everything is like, oh, I've got bare money, I can just trade and I can make what I need. No, forget that for now. You need more probabilities. That's what everyone's suffering with. So when they're coming into the game with small money, yeah, they're not understanding that you don't have enough chances of winning and losing trades because you will lose trades. They keep going around trying to find a perfect person that can trade. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I keep telling you that. Use that. So I'm going to go into the questions now, people. Just bear with me. Um, duh, 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 duh. So, okay. My Forex funds is very good. How much can you make off a 20K account? Okay, so we're going to start from here, yeah? So if you've got my Forex Funds questions, please get them already. I'm fully happy to answer all of these questions for you guys and girls. Yeah, it's Friday. This is why I'm doing this Zoom as well, just so everybody knows. Whoever sticks in to the end, even watching it, you're an absolute G, a general. Pat yourself on the back, and I love you. So how much can you make off a 20K account? So off a 20K account, I say to myself, listen, Joe, yeah, only try and get one to two percent a week when it's live yeah and i say more than not even one to two let me even be let me even break it down even better go and get one percent a week because if you're getting one percent profit a week you're making four percent a month when you add that up to what you could be getting on a 600k account once you manage to get two of these accounts over here with the process i explained earlier in the zoom now if you're making uh 600 you're making twenty eight thousand. £28,000 a month making 1% a week. When you make 1%, which 90% of you don't fail, you more than likely make 1% a week, but you're making 1% on $1,000, on $500. Do you get it? On uh, $200. So the money doesn't make sense. This is what I'm saying. So when you've got a bigger account now, now that makes sense when you're making that. So all you need to do is focus when you're live, once you pass the phases, only make 1% a week. If your trade gives you 1.5% or 2.5% because it was a GBP New Zealand thousand pip drop, whatever, yeah? Every once in every four months, fantastic. But that doesn't happen every day. So just aim for 1% a week. That's what I tell you. Pardon me, sorry. Uh, we move on to the next one. So what's the next question? Um, limit is 600K, my first one, 300K um, equity on one account. Yeah. So yeah, that's the limit. So 600 K here, but then after you've done my forex funds, I've gone through the terms and agreements with FTMO. And if you get the FTMO swing accounts, you can trade them exactly how you can trade the my forex funds accounts. The leverage is different. The, my forex funds has one to uh, 100 and FTMO has one to 30 on their swing accounts, but on their swing accounts on FTMO, you can hold trades overnight you can trade news as well you can do all of that stuff so it's all good for you and one to 30 leverages it's not really much different i've had both accounts and it's not really much different so that's that so you go get that and that's how you get a million pounds worth of capital i'll probably make a video on that in the future um what is your thoughts with five about fivers i haven't used fivers yet my brother was telling me he read into some more today and they're not really the best he said my forex funds is the best out of all of them because the cheapest and they pay you people I keep telling you they pay you 
they're actually like literally the best because they're the cheapest. They do exactly what FTMO does. And they're cheap. So I don't know what to say. So yeah, I haven't read too much into Fivers. I know there's people that do stuff like that. Other people, of course, but again, I'm only focused on getting a million pounds between those two companies for now. Once I get that, then I'll go into other companies. Um, my, uh, what's that, my phone? I made $1,200, I guess 5K for a month, I hope, but 75% for the first month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What brokers do you all prefer? Yeah, my preference is yeah of course so you're going to get the difference so yeah you can um like i said and just like the gentleman said there it does depend on what type of scalper you, um, scalper what type of trader you are uh, of course the gentleman's a scalper but what i try and do explain to people is because you always got to remember the biggest thing the 90 percent of people that fail in for instance why i made the last video is because when you get into this game trust me i came into this game a scalper like i know how to scalp but i prefer to swing trade and the main reason why is because i realized from talking to so many people uh, a lot of people that probably don't go into teaching and talking to loads of different people on the level of trying to teach them in forex yeah um you, i start to see personalities i've seen personalities and i know people because once imagine you've paid me to teach you what i'm doing this is what happened to me if i break it down you paid me to teach you what i'm doing so you can understand better but then when, I, when I'm teaching you, you're hearing what I'm saying, but you're going to do something completely different. Then you come back to me after like a week or uh, two weeks, and then you say you've blown your account. Then I explain to you, okay, don't do this, do this, do this, do that. And then it's cool. Then you go away again and you come back to me, but you've blown twice as much this time. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing, <laughs> literally? Because I'm like, it's personalities. So I tell a lot of people that slow it down, just slow it down, trust me. Now, there's no need to rush this game. Aim, if you hear what I'm saying here, yeah, I saw a very good uh, quote on Instagram about this, and it was, but it was about music. And the person said that producers were telling him, like the OG producers were telling him how to become a better producer and get himself bigger and stuff like that. But he was listening to them, but he wasn't, he, he wasn't hearing them. Do you understand? Like people listen to me, but they're not hearing what I'm saying. They're like, oh yeah, John, cool, 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 cool. But they're not taking it on. Like you don't need to make crazy money on these accounts. I get it. It's nice. It's juicy. It's special. But if you can repeat the same process you're doing, you're going to be able to turn it into an expert advisor, which will be able to trade automatically for you. This is the, the long-term plan. And then you're going to be able to make anything between six to 28,000 a month on this account. You get it. I trade that too. It's only four to five months. I can see it, but good profits. And that's exactly it. So if you just take your time, but I feel like that's again, another thing because people see the only time once they've become consistently profitable, not for you, but for other traders. Yeah. So if I tell people, oh, I was only consistently profitable in the last six months, people don't hear four and a half years. They might not hear that. Oh yeah. It took you four and a half years to get there. They won't hear that. <laughs> they just hear that. Oh, what? So you, so you learn how to make money in six months. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they hear. Like, huh? <laughs> no, you have to go through every single process. So I try and this is what I tell people, forget all the jargon that people are hearing out there. You're going to hear this place hasn't been filled and that hasn't been done. And this, da, 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 da. just trade some damn support and resistance and see if you can understand the charts. You can remember it's only 50, 50%. So you're either going to make money or lose money in this game. It's that simple. There is no 55 different outcomes. It's either going to buy or sell. So you can either win or lose. So that makes it a 50, 50% game. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you can make money in this game. That's how stupid it is. Do you understand? So keep, why would you not keep it simple when it comes to long-term trading? Just always ask yourself that if you're not a consistently profitable trader at the moment. Just do that, basically. Just run it up. So yeah, anybody, anybody else got any other questions, anything like that? If not, pretty much it. So the stream isn't too long, me. Any other questions? And again, go get yourself a MyForest Funds account. I'm plugging. Yes, go get yourself one. Go get yourself one. <laughs> go get yourself one. Yeah, no, definitely. That's what you do. Use the money to go get yourself a 100K and a 50K account. That's what you do. <laughs> 
literally do that and you'll be a-okay. All right, then, people. So I leave it there if no one's got any questions. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate all of you. And um, yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what the, no problem at all. That's cool. Let's see what it is going to bring. Everybody that's in the one-time v- uh, VIP, then um, yeah, just hit me up. Um, hit me up. I will hit you up on Sunday, 6 p.m. UK time. And we'll take it from there. And we'll, we'll go over some other stuff. And like I said, I'm going to go over risk management for prop firm accounts in there for people. I'm going to show you a, a cool little trick if nobody else has, if you haven't seen it before. So I'm going to show you that as well. So yeah. All right, cool people. We'll leave it there. Take care. And thank you for your time.